Welcome back to the FlexSim Healthcare instructional video series. My name is Cliff King, and in this episode, I will demonstrate a couple different ways to model lab work inside a patient flow model. For this demonstration, I will begin with a simple urgent care clinic model that I built in an earlier video, and I will provide a link to that video in the description below. In the urgent care clinic model, patients arrive, register, get triaged, and then are escorted back to an exam room where they will be seen by a doctor. In this video, I will demonstrate ways to model processes, like lab work, that are separate from the patient's main process flow, where work is performed on physical objects rather than on the patient. I will show how to do this two different ways. First, within the patient flow itself, and then within a separate general process flow. The activities I will model associated with the lab process will consist of a nurse drawing blood from the patient after the MD exam and taking that sample to a pneumatic tube station to be sent off to the lab. At the lab, a technician will pick up the sample from a separate pneumatic tube station, carry the sample to a work area, and spend time processing the sample. In this video, we are only concerned with how to set up a separate process flow for lab work so the processing of the lab sample itself will be simplified down to a single processing time requiring a single technician. However, if your desire is to study the lab processes in detail, then you should be able to use this model as a starting point and then expand the single process time into multiple steps with a combination of fixed resources and or process flow activities. Let's take a quick look at the processing steps already in the baseline model that we are starting with. The patient flow begins with a set of activities for registration, then triage, then rooming of the patient, and finally an MD exam. After seeing the doctor, the patient then walks to the exit and leaves the model. Let me make some space to insert some new activity sets. I will use the process with staff activity set to model the blood draw. A nurse will do the blood draw, so I'll sample the RNs group for the staff resource. And I'll rename the resource RN Lab Draw and define the destination for the RNs walk activity as the patient themselves. I want to rename this set of activities Lab Draw. Next, I'll insert a split activity to create two parallel flows, one for the patient and one for the lab sample. The patient flow will proceed to a set of activities for modeling nurse interventions. I will use the process with staff activity set and rename it nurse interventions. For the staff assignment, I will sample the RN staff group and rename the resource box RN Interventions. The destination for the nurse's walk activity in this set will once again be the patient. The second connection coming out of the split will handle lab sample processing and for this I will once again begin with the process with staff activity set. After rearranging things a little bit here I'll rename this new activity set Lab Process. Okay, I need to create a join to join up our split flows so that our lab process and nurse interventions will happen in parallel. And then I'll join up the flows here and then create another process with staff activity set for the final patient education process where the MD, the same one that was used previously, will be used as the staff. have him walk once again to the patient to do the process or patient education in this case and then walk out of the model. Okay I need to add some props. I'll add a lab prop. This is where the lab sample will be processed. And then I'll add a prop starting with a cube and then I'll import a 3D shape that I have for the pneumatic tube station. 
comes in quite large to begin with but I'll size it down to something more manageable here or more the size it should be okay let me position the tube station where I want it and then I'll change its color to green and then I want to duplicate it to make another station in the lab so I'll use control C control V I'll change this one's color to orange and its name to tube station 2 and the other one will be called tube station 1 I also need to add a technician in the lab so let me do that now with these objects in the model I can go back and continue editing the process flow to begin with I'm going to insert a walk activity right after the process time in the lab draw I'll use this walk activity to have the RN walk to tube station 1 as if they were going to send off the sample they just drew to the lab. So I'll call this walk to tube station 1. Okay, next I'm going to insert another process time to give ourselves a little bit of time at the tube station for sending off the sample. We'll just make it 0.5 minutes. And now I need to update the state first of the patient, change it from direct care to indirect care. And then this next object I'll assign to the RN doing the lab draw and change it to performing task as the state. Okay, I'm going to insert another activity. This will be a create object activity. This create object activity will create a cylinder flow item and place it in tube station 2 representing the lab sample I wanted you to know how to create an actual flow item within a process flow okay I'll set the staff resource in the lab process to the technician I just created in the lab and rename it lab tech and set the destination of the walk activity to tube station 2 and rename it walk to tube station 2. Next I'll rename the process activity retrieve time since it represents the time it takes the tech to pick up the sample from the tube station. Only need about 0.2 minutes for that and I don't want to update the state of the patient so let me remove this and the state of the lab tech let me update it to performing task. Okay, now I want to insert a move object activity to move the lab sample flow item from the tube station into the tech. So I'll choose the tech for where I want to move it. And now I'll insert another walk activity. Rename it walk to lab. And instead of the patient walking, it'll be the lab tech, and I'll choose the lab as the destination. Next, I'll insert an activity to move the object again, the item, into the lab station. Then I'll insert an activity for processing the lab sample. I'll remove the patient again from the state change and just change the state of the lab tech to performing task. Let me rearrange things a little bit here and add another activity to remove the flow item after we're done processing it. I want to run the model at least far enough until a lab sample enters so that I can position that cylinder where I want it positioned during the processing of it and give it a size that will be more in order with our skill. There it is. It's that brown cylinder. Okay, I'll stop the model and let me make it a size about 0 0.25, 0 0.25 by 0.5 tall. Now where'd it go? Okay, let me drag it in front of the lab tech and then position it right in front of them. And now I need to remember these XYZ positions. Stop the model. And now let me click on the cylinder in the flow item bin. 
change its size. And I'll change its color to red. Okay, close those windows. I want to insert an activity. I'll use the custom code activity to set the size and location of the or I guess I just need to set the location of the item after it gets moved into the lab. Okay, I'll enter XYZ location values based on what we learned earlier when we clicked on the flow item that was in our model. Okay, reset and run the model and wait for a lab sample to enter. Okay, the tech just got a lab sample, took it over. It looks the size and color it should be, so that's good. Let me speed up the model, and I'll click on this tube station, and we can look at some stats. Looks like we had a max of two lab samples in there at one time. One would be waiting for the other to be finished. Okay, now I want to show you another approach where I'm going to move the lab processing steps out of the patient flow and into a general process flow. This would probably be the way to go if you want to add a lot more detail to your lab processing steps or maybe you have sources of samples that are coming from other places besides the patients in this model. Either way, I think it's a good idea for you to understand another way to do this. So, I'm going to add a general process flow. And then I'm going to go into the patient flow and copy the lab processing steps using Control C and paste them in my general process flow. Resize it to put some more activities in here. Let me go back and delete the lab process over here and also delete the split and join. Don't need those anymore. Now hold the control key down and click and drag create object out. I want to put this in my general process flow. So I'll control C to copy it and then go into my general process flow and paste it here and slide it up to the top of this block. It'll be the first thing that happens. And I can delete it here Next, I want to add a Create Tokens activity. This is a very useful activity. We can create as many tokens as we want with it and place them in any activity we want, even in another process flow. I'll name it Create Tokens Kickoff Lab Process. And then the destination of the token will be in this Process Flow Create Object activity. And I want to copy the labels to the tokens I create and add a label named patient ref with a reference to the patient so I can have an easy reference back to the patient from the general process flow. Okay, instead of a child token, I'll make it be an independent token. And let me finish up the connections here. And then rename the general process flow lab process flow. And for now at least, I'm gonna finish this lab process flow with a sync. Whereas before, I tied it back into the main patient flow with a join. I'm not going to do that at this time. Let's run it and just see if what we have is working. The way the model sits right now, the nurse will finish the lab draw and take it to the tube station. And then there's the create tokens activity, which will kick off the lab process flow, which terminates in a sync after the lab process time is finished. Back in the patient flow, the patient proceeds to the nurse interventions and then even into the patient education without regard to whether or not the lab results are finished. So I'm going to address that problem now by using lists, a list of lab results. I'll insert a pull from list here. So if the token is able to pull a lab result off the list, then it will continue on to patient education. Let me call this pull from lab list. Now go over to the lab process flow, make room to insert a push to list, and this is also where we will define our list. So let me pull the sink down and add a push to list shared asset. And I'll sample over to the right, and that will create a list. I'll name it lab list. And as far as properties go, on the push to list shared asset, 
I think all I want to do is change the partition ID to reference the token of the original patient. So token.parent. Okay, back on the patient flow. In the properties for this, I need to sample the lab list as the reference for the list. And then down in partition ID, simply say token. And all of this is to match up the patient with the correct lab results. So if it is able to pull the correct results from the lab list, then it will continue down to patient education and finish out the patient flow. OK, this concludes my instruction. And we'll finish out the video by watching the model run.